after playing more than nine hours of a labyrinth legend i feel like i've learned a couple of things that i hope will be helpful to those who are playing the game or those who are thinking about playing it what's up girls and boys what's up internet I am Bianca, and for today, I would like to share 9 things Labyrinth Legend doesn't outright tell you, but are useful to know about the game anyways. Now, these are some things you might have picked up on yourself if you're playing the game, or these might be some things that are new to you. Either way, I hope that this video could be helpful all the same. But before we begin, if you guys are interested in knowing what Labyrinth Legend is and how it plays, then you can check the previous video that I made which talks about my thoughts and impressions on it. You can either click on the card right here or check out the video description down below for the link. Now, let's get started with the first on our list. One of the things you may have noticed when you're starting the game for the first time and are exploring the village is that there are facilities that requires a different kind of payment from the coins you get from cutting the grass, destroying the boxes, defeating enemies, and opening chests. These facilities, like the mines and the monster island, requires magical ingredients for their services depicted by the soul-like icon you can see here. So, how and where do you get these? First off, you need to buy the magic bottle from the general store, which would allow you to gather these resources. After purchasing the first bottle, succeeding purchases will increase its capacity by 500. As for the ingredients themselves, you automatically obtain these by defeating enemies, provided that you have the magical bottle. The higher the level of the enemy, the more magical ingredient you can obtain from them. Subsequently, depending on how well you can handle the labyrinths, you may want to invest in more potion bottles and magic potions, which permanently increases your magic points or MP by one. These will make your labyrinth runs a little bit easier thanks to the added healing and additional magic or skill use. So maybe you're not very good with remembering directions or remembering which parts of the labyrinth's floor you have already explored. Or maybe you've unlocked the portal leading to the next floor but have forgotten where it actually is and you would rather not explore the entire floor again. There is an easy way to go about it and that is by using the game's built-in map. You can access the map by pressing the plus button on your controller and maneuvering to this icon here. Clicking this icon will open up the floor's current map and will show you the places you've already explored within. This is also useful if you are the type who wants to explore every nook and cranny of a floor before proceeding deeper into the labyrinth. Aim Assist is a feature that makes Labyrinth Legend easier to play. With Aim Assist turned on, the game will do the aiming for you, automatically aiming for the closest enemy. If, however, you would prefer to have full control over your attacks and would like to make the game a bit harder, then you can turn this setting off. To do so, simply head on over to the options menu accessible via pressing the plus button on the controller and navigating to the cogwheel icon on the upper right of the screen and unchecking the aim assist option. Another thing you should prioritize is getting yourself a monster companion and picking one with the HP and MP restoration skills. These skills allow your monsters to heal a fraction of your health and magic points whenever you enter a new floor, which, with limited restorative items on your belt, will help you overcome the challenges in store for you. 
It is also advisable to stick to one monster to level it up rather than changing up monsters frequently. So, how do you get a monster companion? That's easy, by making use of Oma's services in the monster island. You can let Oma look for monsters and tame them, provided you have enough magical ingredients to do so. There is a limit to how many monsters you can have in your island, with the initial number being 2. But you can increase this limit by purchasing the necessary upgrade from the general store. Another facility that requires magical ingredients to use is the mine. The mine is an easy way to get ores for upgrading your gear for a reasonable amount of magical ingredients. And although you can only get iron ores in the beginning, you can expand what could be found in the mine by purchasing the mine upgrade in the general store. What I suggest, once you have found the monster with the HP and MP regenerating ability, is that you use all your magic ingredients on the mine as frequently as you can. This will give you enough materials to constantly upgrade your gear, increasing your attack and defense, as well as providing whatever other benefits you choose. This will also ensure that you do not waste your labyrinth runs, as the magic bottle does fill up rather quickly. Upgrading your gear in Labyrinth Legend is quite easy to do and is pretty much required if you want to progress as quickly and as efficiently in this game. Having said that, there is a limit to how much you can upgrade them and what benefits you want to see added or upgraded. With a limit of 5 upgrades per equipment piece, it is advisable to pick the upgrades you need by putting into consideration not just the materials required, but your play style as well. Rare items have better upgrade selections from wider attack range, increased experience gain, lesser MP use, and shot penetration, just to name a few. And it is best to read through the description of what these benefits are before you commit to unlocking them. Now, as I've mentioned in my thoughts and impressions video, I've played through the entire game and I'm still playing as the Strider. I picked this class from the three available due to the Strider's guard skill, which is pretty useful and handy as it lets you defend against attacks in exchange for a fraction of your MP. And while you can simply wait for an attack to come and press and hold the L button as you do, being able to master the timing of when to press the guard button can make Labyrinth runs much easier as doing so triggers a deflect, which not only sends the attack back but also damages nearby enemies ganging up on you in the process. This is especially useful against mage enemies as well as when you are being mobbed by enemies. It does take quite a lot of practice to master though. So, you accidentally sold some legendary gear and you want it back? While the game doesn't have the option to buy back what you have sold, you can, however, get these items back by quickly quitting the game by pressing the home button and closing the game from the Switch's menu and just rebooting the game and loading your save file. While this is not the most elegant way to go about it, it does return your items back to you provided that you have quickly closed the game upon realizing your mistake. This is because the game autosaves whenever you return to the village and saves the game manually when you choose to quit the game by returning to Labyrinth Legends' own menu. So, if you made a mistake while preparing in town, simply reset the game and these mistakes would be as they never happened. It has honestly saved my hide quite a few times in my own playthrough with how many times I accidentally sold a rare or stronger item than what I had equipped. 
And lastly, this is something of a heads up for people who want to uncover more of Labyrinth Legends story. While the game doesn't offer the typical cutscenes to progress the narrative further, it does require you to speak to the villagers if you want to learn more about the Kingdom of Kanata and the curse that has befallen it. Villagers in this game typically update their dialogue whenever you complete a labyrinth and defeat its boss. What insight they offer are interesting and they do, at times, provide you with a hint of what needs to be done or what items are required in order to progress. And that's about all the tips and tricks and what I think are important things to note if you're playing or are planning to play this title. Labyrinth Legend isn't really a deep game and mastery comes in simply knowing how enemies move and their attack patterns. And even if you're having a difficult time, the game doesn't penalize you for it and lets you change the difficulty settings if you find things are way too hard or too easy. And even though it lacks a lot of things, it does provide a certain kind of enjoyment and satisfaction that even people who aren't used to playing roguelites may find it accessible to dig into. But anyways, that's just my take on the game and again, some things I have personally learned from playing this title. I hope that you guys found them helpful and useful and with that, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, you guys know the drill. Dream on, fly on. Bye bye for now. Keep safe everyone. Someday, we'll have a last conversation